It's interesting, Dickie, they're talking about the Queen would never have even con contemplated Regency. And yet another discussion when it comes to what's gone on in royal news today is that King Charles has dropped Prince Andrew and Prince yeah, Harry from that's... acting as substitutes. Should he be taken and well or is uh, in business abroad? I mean, how significant is this? Because my understanding is that uh, he had already basically said, well, this can only be done by working royals, which, of course, Andrew no longer is and Harry definitely is not. Um, but he has now sort of said, well, you know, provisionally they still maintain that title, but they're not allowed to do it. I think what this speaks to is the dangers of trying to have a streamlined monarchy, yeah. which is some, certainly something that I have supported in the past. And I think we can easily underestimate just how many royal engagements can they can go to in every single year and the demands on certain working royal uh, members of the royal family. Now that the king has come in, come in and he quite clearly wants to streamline it, he wants to make it in some ways a lower key mm. affair, well, the risk as we are now seeing that, is, exactly is if right. they are incapacitated. I doubt that we are now going to move into a situation where Prince Andrew and Prince oh. Harry become fully-fledged working mm. royals. Oh. Uh, perhaps they will be there on the sidelines as some kind of buffer, yeah. but no more than that. But just one thing to the story about naming Lilibet. I don't tend to get too incensed by Harry uh, and Meghan. Yeah. There are plenty other, of other hardened. people who will We're do... Well, hardened, perhaps. There we, are plenty yeah. of other people who, do, who will do that. But I was quite cross when yeah, first they chose mm. that name. Because the Queen had so few things in her life that were private, so few things that were just mm. hers. And then there was the timing as well as the choice of the name, because this came after they had aired their dirty laundry yeah. on Oprah. And so what they ultimately did was take something that was so personal to Her it, Majesty it, it yeah. was and turn it into a PR stunt. It was a cheap yeah, it was, it was really, tell. really tacky. And that's why I think mm. when we all read it, well, I, think, I can't imagine the Queen saying, oh, yes, do this. Oh, I'd love that. You know, yeah. I think that had they have asked her, which they didn't, we now know, even though they pretended they did, right. uh, she may have said, well, look, Elizabeth, fine, but not Lilibet. I think the greatest honour they could have paid the Queen was to respect the institution that she represented yeah. dutifully for all of her life. Well, yeah. Yeah. and slagging it off all yeah. the time. Also, the other thing, I think, you know, uh, great respect and uh, I admire that King Charles very much, but uh, I think he's wrong about slimming, slim, slimming down the royal family. I think he always was, because the more you do that, the more we they'll end up like those, uh, what they call them, the, the bicycling royals of Europe that people barely know and they go down Tesco's, you know, and things like that. So I think, uh, you know, the clue is in the name, His Majesty, the royal family should be majestic. The counter to that is instances like Air Miles Andy. And what they don't want is a situation <laughs> where the royals are being seen, some members of the royal family are being seen to have all of the perks, but actually aren't doing the hard graft that some of the core mm -hmm. members are. And yet they are enjoying themselves to a great extent at the public's expense. Yeah. And there are examples of that where it has begun to turn mm. the British public away from and against the royal family. And I suspect that King Charles was mm. wary of that when he assumed Yeah, I suppose he's also is thinking, you know, these are difficult times, uh, cost of living crisis and all that. Uh, if they are, they are palpably seen to be spending loads of money, uh, I suppose, uh, he probably thought that wasn't a good look. Mm. But he's given a significant nod, of course, to his brother and sister, Anne and Edward, by saying to mm. them, you get to be uh, a councillor of state for the rest of your lives, even when William's children reach majority. I want you in mm. the thick of it and I want you to represent mm. me. They were immensely popular members of the royal family and with good reason. They have never sought to overstate their roles. They've generally been low-key. They've downplayed it. Look at Anne's recent royal tour. Everyone loves that. Everyone loves that. Everyone loves that. Um, and, you know, of course, Kate Middleton's immensely popular, not least because she is perceived to be reasonably thrifty. She will recycle dresses that she's worn. She'll wear things off the rack from Zara and other yeah, high street right, yeah. shops. And there's a sort of down-to-earth nature or perception of the Cambridges that perhaps we haven't had in the past, but it's something that the royal family, you're right, Kevin, need to be conscious of when there's a cost yeah. of living crisis. Uh, but, of course, Kate is one of those annoying people who'd look really good when she was wearing a sack, you know? I mean, and a hospital yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. She probably looks right brilliant Perfect in hospital hair, yeah, right exactly. now. Yeah. Um,